topic of the session is innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we are going to cover briefly, very briefly, mechanism of invention and innovation, then theory of inventive problem solving uh, with acronym TRIES, design thinking, design driven innovation, open innovation, introduction to intellectual property rights. Just a brief introduction. Okay, before going into innovation, uh, the backbone of innovation actually is design, design and innovation. And uh, it may sound a little uh, surprising, uh, the, the tagline, one of the few creative geniuses to walk on the earth is Mahatma Gandhi. You might be surprised to how so. When Gandhiji came back from South Africa, Congress gave him the responsibility to spearhead the fight against the British, the mighty British. And uh, in those days, uh, arms struggle was the main form of fighting. Then Gandhiji thought, okay, let me understand who are the people who will fight for me, who, whom I can bank on. So he went to remote rural places and met people, people who are supposed to fight for him. Surprisingly, he realized that these people are not interested in either independence nor anything else but food. They don't have two square meals. So the primary requirement for them is two square meals. They don't understand fighting. They don't have the energy, the, the power, the, the will to fight. So how you can fight the mighty British with these people? So understanding the people or your your asset your wherewithal is very important for doing anything then what gandhiji did is he tried to then uh, he, his fo entire focus diverted from independence to do something for the people some something good for the people so that the immediate problem can be solved so he ex those days there was no internet there was no computer there was no software so the, the resources were limited, the, li the, the needs also were limited. So what he did is he, he explored as to what can give uh, a bit of employment to these guys or partial employment to a huge number of population. People consumed food and they con consumed clothes. So these are two items and of course medicines and other things, light was not so much of a or the, it was rather than a, rather a fad and than anything else. So he realized that food is one side that is agriculture is one focus and clothing is another focus. And he found that uh, if something can be done so that people can manufacture their own clothing, perhaps will give enormous em employment to huge number of pop people in the country. So he started uh, talking to people who can devise this charkha and then then uh, it, it translated into a revolution. Hitherto, uh, most of the textile things used to be imported from Britain, whereas the cotton used to be manufactured in India. So the whole value chain uh, was shifted back to India and uh, rest is history. And that is why means this is all part of design. Design is to understand the pain that you are going to solve or, or you are going to solve somebody's pain. Independence is the pain for everybody, means for all the people of the country. So you need to understand what do they want, what the pain, what is the greatest pain that they have. And then you understand, uh, you look around and see what are the possible or plausible solutions then you come. So eventually he found a solution. Now, before we talk about invention, innovation, uh, let us uh, make a distinction between or try to understand these two items which are used interchangeably. Invention is to, is to create something new uh, and meaningful. You do anything new that is non-existent and it is meaningful, then it is an invention. It's, it's a part, it may be part of research and development or you may just casually sitting here and ruminating and, and uh, there is some kind of a if, if any or something and you get some a new idea, new uh, revelation. Now if that is useful, it is kind of an invention. Whereas innovation is putting that invention or any other invention for that matter 
to the to a useful application meaning it should be useful to a group of people group of companies maybe or one company two companies whatever so uh, and a good example is the is uh, thomas alva edison you know before he invented the light bulb along with the filament many people many researchers actually came out with the filament technology and they published papers and they thought eureka we have done means they have already done but that is the invention part of it when edison started thinking about manufacturing them he realized that the life of this filament is not even a second it's fraction of a second so what good that is which does not survive even a second so he started exploring and he explored with umpteen number of combination of material eventually tungsten uh, emerged as the as a pos possible material still the life of short life was short so eventually he came up with the idea of a vacuum container glass container because this filament at high temperature was oxidized and then it, it was kind of uh, it was going off so uh, eventually the bulb actually was born he did not stop it there because a bulb what good is a bulb when there is no electric supply uh, in the house so he put the entire uh, infrastructure to manufacture and supply electricity to home and then the light bulb and and the society actually started illuminating and this whole thing is innovation starting from inventing the the filament putting that packaging that into a product and then making it available to the people and giving them uh, a, a, a kind of a infrastructure or a context where this remains as a sustainable tenable solution that does a lot of good to to the people whom you are giving that is what is innovation now invention means it may sound as if invention is bad than innovation but fact is that invention is the starting point innovation come then so invention is is important now how to invent is a question that has been bogging the entire society and there is no solution there is no answer nobody has a fixed answer that this is how you invent but still we have to means there are uh, method or proven methods to to systematically uh, uh, approach this problem and then come up with invention fact is that uh, we uh, traditionally we don't engage in invention inventive activities we engage in cognitive activities where we read books and write examinations but very few schools very few colleges in the world will ask students to invent or there will be a organized structured curriculum where invention is one of the thing whatever that is uh, let me put my perspective it's kind of taken from different sources so to invent you need a problem you cannot sit in your uh, in the comfort of your room maybe uh, drawing room and think what i can invent uh, that will take you nowhere you need a problem how to get a problem you get a problem when you encounter a problem where do you encounter a problem when you try to do something so the first thing is need to do something engage engage in anything and everything you cook you work in a factory you go to school you try to drive you see nature you see everything and then you you will encounter problem there is no bed of rose that you will be traveling and it's kind of an utopian society nowhere so problems are everywhere identify one and then try to see whether this is a doable thing so second part is define you define the problem you break the problems into elements there are there are multiple elements maybe one two three four are infinite number of elements then you try to understand all the elements separately and try to see whether you you it falls within your knowledge domain and whether you can do that most importantly you question that why this problem or what can be the solution both means how to solve you question this after your question comes a kind of a reply from within but the reply will come 
only when you have a trust, you have a leap of faith, meaning that you must believe that a solution is always possible. You must believe that nothing is perfect. You must believe that there is nothing called best. There is always a possibility to improve. So take this leap of faith that okay, this is the problem and this can be perhaps solved. So take that leap of faith and then try to explore around. Like say you have broken that into elements. So now see, suppose, suppose think of this pointer. See, uh, there is a nice kind of a grip. So from this design itself, if I am designing suppose a kind of a say scissor, so I can think say for cutting grass maybe. So if I feel that this grip is nice, comfortable and you know is firm, so I take this knowledge there. So I need to explore what solutions exist in the horizon and then what I can copy paste there. This is also invention. So putting this everything together, perhaps I come up with a solution. So I need to look around and find solution, look for solution, look for ideas. Ideas can be combined, then research, meaning once you have number of ideas, then you try to prototype or try to do experiments or even you put that into your subconscious and the subconscious will gradually churn it, exercise and then suddenly there will be an eureka moment. What about that? leap of faith is absolutely essential. Most importantly, you will hear people saying, I never heard of things like that. They will never invent. You have to think that yes, it is possible. You tell somebody that I can you know, drill a hole in the, in the earth and reach to the other end of the earth. Of course, it's not possible. People will say crazy, but it's, it's really crazy perhaps because earth is so hot in the middle and gravity will never allow you to go to the other end if you really can go inside. You will you'll be hanging there with a simple harmonic motion for infinite amount of time, whatever. But then you must believe that there is a solution. Only then solution will arrive. So that is what is leap of faith. Now, as I said that you have to really engage to find a problem. See what Dyson did, if you are not aware about the name, James Dyson is a person, is a Brit British citizen who invented a new kind of uh, vacuum cleaner, a bladeless fan, a fan which does not have blades. And he is a, he's a billionaire now, he was almost like a very simple non-entity, but now he is a, he's a famous man like Steve Jobs. He used to use a vacuum cleaner like most of us use and all of us face one problem that as you use vacuum cleaner as you as gather as dust gathers inside the bag the filter bag uh, the suction actually reduces the because the bag becomes kind of op uh, means uh, uh, the pores in the bag gets filled so there is less suction and it loses efficiency dyson also had encountered the same problem but then he question that why it is to be like this and he had a leap of faith that there definitely is a solution. So he was looking around, not necessarily to find a solution, it is not that you go around and look for a solution, of course you can do this today in this age of internet, you can actually google search and find umpteen number of contexts where there will be some kind of a solution. But what he did actually, he suddenly chanced upon a sawdust removal kind of a cyclone separator where he found a bag that is clean on the go. You do not have to really open the cleaner and then remove dust from the bag and then refit which we normally do for a vacuum cleaner. So he realized that oh, this, is, this, this can be actually replicated in vacuum cleaner. So it was a kind of an eureka moment for him and then he started working and eventually he actually came up with a vacuum cleaner that works so well with the same technology. So it is a combination of existing knowledge. He did not invent anything, but he invented this combination of different knowledge. He filed several patents, he got patents and today in 2018, he, it, it has become a 5.8 billion dollar company. He himself became a billionaire. So look how invention can be done, how innovation can be done. This whole thing is innovation problem, then define the problem, find the solution, 
put everything together, prototype, validate, go to market. So this is how actually is to innovate. Little bit of digression. All of you are aware that our brain has two compartments. The left brain is the cognitive part, meaning you can recognize or you can decipher or you can resolve whatever is available, whatever knowledge is available. Suppose I tell you a story about a scientific fact. Suppose I tell this story to 100 people. There will be different level of understanding comprehension. So some people will understand in the first place, some people will take some time, some will not understand in the first place. They have to be told two times, three times, five times perhaps. So this is a level of different difference level, different level of cognitive skill. So left brain is or contains the cognitive capability, meaning the capability to understand, comprehend existing knowledge that is written in a book or elsewhere. The right brain is the creative creative part, meaning it is responsible for the talent that helps you to create something that does not exist. This is a creative part. So cognitive and creative and it actually works in in, uh, in a team like, uh, like uh, your creative brain takes help of the cognitive brain to, to go beyond certain level. Like you can create something at some point of time you are going to be get blocked. Then you need some knowledge, some theories, some bookish knowledge that you have learned. So that will help you to move forward. That is and then there are, there are various people with various level of uh, cognitive skill and various level of creative skill. Everybody has both skill, but then has both skills, but then uh, it varies actually the level of skill varies. Some of them are inherited, some of them can be actually inculcated. Just like you study in school, you read books, through that you gradually improve your cognitive skill. Like you write and your handwriting becomes better, you do anything repeatedly, you actually churn your cognitive skill and then you gradually become a more intelligent person from cognitive point of view. Unluckily, our academics does not promote so much of uh, uh, the creative part of the brain, meaning they do not put a lot of challenges before us to the creative part of our brain. If we start doing that, our creative talent will enhance. That is the belief that many people actually maintain. There is another, another uh, say virtual compartments, compartment, uh, compart yeah, another set of virtual con compartment. One is or maybe three compartments actually, conscious uh, level of conscious uh, state of your mind, then subconscious state of your mind and unconscious state of your mind. Normally we like I am talking, I am talking from my conscious mind. Of course, I am repeatedly, continuously trying to co communicate with my, with my cognitive or with my reservoir of knowledge that I have gathered over years. At the same time, that is my co cognitive skill, oh sorry, conscious mind which, which is working. The other part is subconscious mind. From the image actually, I did not get a better image without licensing, means this is, this is, this is the one best one that I got without really violating any licensing rule. So from the image, you should, you should try to understand that 90 percent, about 90 percent, some people put a data, but I do not know how people put a data on this, about 90 percent of our mental activity happens in the subconscious sphere. Only 10 percent happens in the conscious state of your mind. Then there is another philosophy, again there is no, no proof, meaning there is no empirical evidence, perhaps there are little bit, but then I do not have. Like people say that we use only 5 percent of our brain. Now imagine that you exercise your brain both creative and cognitive and the more you do, the better you exploit the brain may be beyond 5 percent. If 
five percent makes a genius. Just think five point one percent will make a super genius because incremental knowledge matters a lot. So that is another aspect. So perhaps, perhaps I am a strong believer of this that we can actually exercise our subconscious mind. What I mean to say this is we can actually tell our subconscious that you have to do this. I will give an example to drive home this point. It is co contradicting or it is kind of controversial. You know this, but still you perhaps never thought about it this way. You go to bed, suppose at 1 in the night, 1 say 105 in the night, you go to bed, 5 past 1. And suppose you have to catch a flight or a train say at 3 o'clock. So, you want to wake up at say 2.35. I am giving a slightly odd figure about the time because I do not want to make a round figure. Now, when, when you go to bed at say 5 past 1 and if you have to wake up at 2.35, the time of time that you can sleep is very short. So, it is a difficult situation to really wake up. So, you put alarm to wake up other, otherwise somebody has to wake you up. But do this experiment. You go to bed at 5 past 1 or at any time, any point of time, not necessary it has to be this context. Any context you go to bed at a certain time, but till the last time, last moment you go to sleep, you should tell yourself that wake up at 2.35 or wake up at any this particular time. If you can do this effectively or it means most of the people can do this, they will wake up exactly at the time that they tell themselves to do. Who wakes them up? What is there? Now, if there is anything to explain, that is the subconscious. We do many things in the subconscious. This is proven, proven through empirical evidence, not really through mathematics or physics or chemistry, but this is proven that we have a subconscious, subconscious is active, subconscious sphere is larger than conscious and you can actually instigate, stimulate your subconscious into action and your subconscious can deliver much better compared to what it does at present. We will revisit that going forward. Now, several resources have eventually come up with some steps, they have defined some steps. It is not necessary to define because creativity involves umpteen number of phases. You can divide them into umpteen number of phases, but then making significant phases, defining significant phases may actually help us to follow a step by step process. Like as I said, everything starts with identifying the problem. So, once the problem is identified, identified, you have defined the scope and the, the domain completely and the elements of the problem completely, then starts your creative process. So, first step is idea generation, then you prepare, then you incubate the idea, illuminate and verify. That is the validation stage. I will move forward instead of wasting time. Idea generation, germination meaning taking root, idea take roots. So, the exact mechanism nobody knows obviously, but then the moment you have a problem either with or without your knowledge, you actually start thinking, start thinking, start you know your brain moves from different chapters in different books like whatever you learn from your childhood till now and tries to find some connection, connectivity or some similarity of this problem and then it tries to start creating ideas and then somewhere, sometime your brain actually start connect means start putting pieces together and then it realizes that okay, so there it, it is a doable thing. So, the leap of faith comes and you think that okay, right, that there, there can be a solution definitely because this is done, that is done this way. So, I can connect them and perhaps we can do. So, it might be a plethora of ideas, means many ideas, not just one idea. And then suddenly some combination emerges and you have some kind of a eureka moment. Then preparation or rationalization. 
once an idea is seeded the brain brain embarks on conscious search meaning you start you know gathering information from different different technologies different products different different na natural phenomena or events and then uh, this this is the way you prepare means uh, you come up with many ideas so then you you have a reservoir of knowledge in your mind that has been accumulated over the years so you try to make back up back and forth communication with your your reservoir or maybe whatever you see in the external world and then you prepare then comes incubation meaning here the subconscious actually takes over without your knowledge you actually have entrusted your subconscious to think and find a solution so your subconscious now starts churning it starts connecting uh, doing research this process of you know connecting by the subconscious is called synaptics they join different pieces of information together and then without your knowledge suppose you are sleeping in the midnight suddenly midnight 1 2 3 o'clock or somewhere you wake up thinking that i have got a solution it's not that you is it it came from it's not that it came from nowhere actually you were wide awake all through awake in your subconscious not in your conscious so your subconscious was churning this idea trying to find a solution connecting so it's almost like fighting a war in your brain and then suddenly a solution comes it immediately relays that solution to your conscious and your conscious wakes you up and you are awakened and you got this solution it has to happen like this because consciously as we can imagine that it is only 10 percent of the brain subconscious is 90 percent of the brain don't go by the data but almost like that so you have to really exploit your subconscious much more much with much more depth and uh, width and what not and and put yourself under the challenge give yourself the challenge only then that is why people say necessity is the mother of invention let me take a little bit of digression to connect this with this if necessity is the mother of all invention that definitely means that only when we need we become cap capable of inventing meaning that we are actually capable of inventing but when we are are kind of faced with a challenge we are thrust under a challenge we tend to be innovative inventive which means that we have the capacity but usually we don't use it we use them when situation so demands we can actually simulate that kind of a situation every time all the time and then make us innovative that means we can actually we all are inventive uh, only thing is that we don't we don't try to put ourselves in a situation where we start inventing so as i said when you wake up in the middle of the night you may think that suddenly i had this epiphany or eureka moment but then it's not sudden it was happening like newton it is not the apple that fell on his head and he invented or discovered gravity is not that newton was doing research for decades to find to explain this phenomena of gravity maybe this falling of apple in front of him perhaps connected his years of research and then suddenly there was this moment of moment of eureka like archimedes like alexander graham bell alexander graham bell from very childhood was interested in sound in uh, in inventing something that that uh, that can amplify sound particularly because his mother was uh, was deaf so he was he always wanted that i should do something for my mother so wherever he was finding bits and pieces of knowledge about sound he was gathering and collecting and on a, on a day in his research lab his assistant was you know tinkering with something and there was suddenly there was a twang sound then it attracted his attention why this sound how this happened because there is nothing that create this sound there was a wire connected with some uh, another metal and when they came together there was a sound so he, he immediately there was 
this uh, serendipity or epiphany moment when he thought okay so this is a solution so if apple would have fallen in front of every other people all other people nobody even in front of newton he also would not have come up with this theory unless he was churning with that idea for a long long time all this moment actually is a connection between your internal fight for a solution and this external event that is what is what actually is important it is believed that our left brain always try to help the right brain to do this means they connect with all this kind of event so this is my my theory that um, we can actually tell our subconscious to be inventive to do something continuously we can actually poke and uh, we can improve ourselves both cognitive and creative talent we can actually improve if you if you try to connect all those pieces uh, that i am just explaining you will realize that we can actually we are actually capable of doing more but we don't do unless we are challenged and that is why the society who are more active they are economically better better off fourth stage is the illumination when you realize this is the moment when your conscious mind actually takes all the knowledge from subconscious and they try to correlate and try to put things together and then suddenly a solution emerges and you see wow aha so this is a solution i have got a solution something like that it happened to even marie curie marie curie put some uh, 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 some photographic papers uh, in her drawer wrapped with some mat material and after coming coming back about a month of holiday or so she opened it to notice some spot on the on this photographic plates and then she immediately realized that this is nothing but a special ray coming from the metal that is that has damaged my my photographic film had it been with me with somebody else who are not doing research on x rays would never have occurred to them that this is coming from the metal and this is actually x ray so she invented x ray that way discovered x ray that way last is a verific verification meaning validation you now you make a prototype and you show it to the customers or anybody who are supposed to be the user uh, among the user community then get the feedback and get it validated do it repeatedly like the, the lean uh, product development philosophy and then eventually come up with something that is validated and then go for commercial production so it becomes commercially relevant technology innovation and entrepreneurship can best be explained with the slogan that is written in facebook little red book that if you don't create something that can kill facebook somebody else will meaning that it's a competitive world unless you keep on inventing and remain ahead of competition competitors will be ahead of you and you will be nowhere so innovation this statement can never be over emphasized innovation is the driving force for entrepreneurship it is more true today than it was yesterday it will be more true tomorrow than it is today from an entrepreneurial perspective we need to connect this two and then keep on inventing the same thing what peter peter drucker said and on my right actually is the distinction between invention and innovation see that at leisure thank you for this session